Um, Karim, you're basically um, looking into producing content now for TV and digital. Um, from, from discussions we had, you're contemplating either releasing those videos on YouTube or having a dedicated portal uh, to, to release those videos and bring it basically driving a lot of traffic to it. What are the factors that you need to take into consideration in either strategy? It's, it's quite simple at the high level right now, unless YouTube lets me basically get a share, unless they start selling ads and giving me a share of it, then it, I, I basically lose interest in that as, a, as an option. But that's where I would like to be. So the earlier they do this, the better for most content creators. Um, and there will be a lot of high quality online content that is looking for monetization. It doesn't have to be broadcast quality, but that doesn't mean it won't be high quality. So I think YouTube will... We'll do, we'll do wonders for people who are creating content but basically not knowing how to make money from it. The, the, the pro side is that you don't worry about the platform the, at, at a high level. The downside is that you're losing control basically of your access to your clients. So if, you know, I'm not saying they will do this, but if one day YouTube drastically changes its terms of business and you've built an entire uh, audience base off of YouTube alone and you don't have your own, uh, your own portal, then uh, you're at risk, basically. So you either go in on a leap of faith kind of thing, or uh, you've seen it with other examples. So Zynga, for example, started completely trusting Facebook, and then at some point when they got so big, they're like, oh, maybe it's a good idea for us to also have... So I think if you want to launch quickly, YouTube is a good, is a good uh, place to go, and it's where all the people are, mostly. Uh, eventually, you will need to have your own portal. To start with your own portal alone is very, very difficult because of this, the discovery issue, one. And two, because unless you have massive traffic, advertisers will just not notice you. So then you either end up having to go into a network where you have no control over your advertising anyway, or you end up not getting any advertisers. So right now it looks like YouTube is, the, if they monetize, is the easy option. Um, let's, let's discuss business model. So um, are you looking into a subscription model or purely advertising based? And that question is going to go to you along with Anrami. And, and uh, Noor. Okay, so on content online, I mean, uh, even on television, subscription models are very, very difficult and almost impossible in our part of the world, unless they're priced right. Online, unless you are a B2B play that has very specific, very specialized uh, content, instructional content, uh, content that requires certain expertise, I think you would find it near impossible to actually apply a subscription model to it. Uh, then you have to rely on other things. And I don't know if Alexandra is in the room because she didn't believe that content could survive of advertising. So this could be an interesting debate. But you have several options. You have standard advertising and pre-roll. If you end up having your own portal and you have certain traffic, you have some banner traffic, but that's not, that's not really going to make or break the business. You have opportunities that very few people have uh, noticed and but are beginning to exploit. So like product placement. And I think uh, also being paid to create your content is another thing that people should look into because there's a lot of brands out there who want to engage with their customers in a way other than a 30 second spot which is extremely cluttered and they want to do it through content but they don't want to suddenly become their own production company or, or so there are different ways uh, my my answer is a bit different i think it's not just either subscription or ad supported there is something else in between uh, one, we're not going to be uh, only subscription-based. We're going to be a freemium model, right? So you're going to get still some stuff for free unless you opt in and uh, subscribe and get everything. That's one. Two, we're looking to reducing the cost for the user by introducing something in between, which is this, some, a partner to subsidize actually the service. See, when you, when you watch an, a show that uh, NBC are doing, someone is paying the cost. Yeah, it's advertisers. We're looking to do something similar, but not directly front and center ad on the, on the app or on the, in the music while you're listening. We, do believe, we do not want to intrude. We're actually adding quite a lot of value for the user in our application, and we do not want to intrude into an intrusive ad. So do we, we, I don't think we're going to go this way. But on the other hand, I do believe there are a lot of partners who are willing to subsidize that by providing extra functionalities or by by actually providing extra, extra functionalities for the users and giving out uh, a lot of from Anrami. So I think uh, this is one of the things that we're looking forward to give, to provide actually, sorry. 
Let's, let's wrap up with that final question to Noor. I just want to know from you, on mobile, are you seeing advertising providing the bulk of the revenues, or are we seeing basically in-app purchase or sales of virtual goods that are bringing in the bulk of the revenues? Of course not from advertising. And yes, for in-app purchases, freemium model is the best model so far, uh, presented to uh, the new generation of gamers, uh, which we call them users today. Uh, and yes, that will be uh, offering a fun game and having the extra fun through uh, in-ass purchases. And it depends on your engagement and how you build this engagement. So no advertising, and I don't recommend for any game company to go into advertising as a source of revenue. Okay, thank you, guys. Do we, do we have time for uh, questions from the floor? Okay, uh, any questions from the floor? The gentleman in the back. Before arriving to uh, Iyad, I would like to thank the cartoonists. Thank you for the great work. <laughs> Super. Uh, yes, uh, my question to. Uh, yes, uh, my question to uh, Mr. Faris. Uh, I saw uh, advertisement for online games. Yes. Uh, I saw some advertisement for online games, especially recently for Travian Games. Uh, can you tell uh, how effective uh, those advertisement uh, on, on the games, on the games performance, I mean? Could you hear that? Uh, how, how effective the performance of these games? Yes, uh, to, to convert in terms of users or money. I don't know if you have some measures or, or any KPIs to track the effective of the uh, promotion for Travian games? Sure. So our strategy with games is, is twofold. One, um, for some of our TV shows and some of our TV stars, we will commission games to certain developers. We have also our own developer. We have actually an office in Jordan here that's just for development. Um, and we'll develop our own and then those we own and, and we promote. And then we also partner with game developers uh, where we have some sort of revenue share model. A lot of the games that we, you see promoted on TV are probably uh, some sort of partnership with the game developers where we promote it and we have some sort of revenue share model with them. Uh, they tend to work very well. Actually, a lot of the companies have come to us and said that pushing the game in the right place with the right show association does better than pushing it through a telco. And our rates are a little more moderate than telcos. But um, in terms of revenue share. And so, to give you a few stats, we have for kids on our NBC3 online, we have a couple of games. We get about 3.5 million players. Um, most of them are freemium style games. Uh, we, uh, online subscriptions for games also range in that range. They get the hundreds of thousands. Uh, it, if placed close to a show and somebody's a fan of a show or a star or a personality or an event, uh, they tend to do very well. We ran one for uh, the uh, World Cup uh, and also got a couple of million downloads. Does that answer your question? How come we don't hear those numbers before? Sorry? You said five and a half million? Three and a half, Three and a half million. Players? Kids, kids. That's, that, that, that's a big number. It is a big number. How come we don't get to hear it in the news, press releases, anything of the sort? So we're very careful with how we manage NBC3, our kids' network, in terms of monetization. And this is, uh, comes from way up top on how we do it. So even when you have on the game show, when kids have to call in to the game show, we actually pay for that call. So we have them call and we call them back. Um, we're very careful how we monetize it, the type of games, and, and, and we... Where it's, it's not, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out a way to where it's monetizable and still responsible. But uh, in terms of games and uptake of, of kids, you know, they, most of them come on our site. We have chat, we have all sorts of things, but most of them come for the games. Uh, one of the more popular games we have uh, Safari, Ice Safari, which is like Survivor for kids. We, it was on air for a couple of years and then we pulled it off. And it, the game still survives and does very, very well. Well, what's the model on this? Is it virtual gifts? It's virtual goods. It's freemium, but to be honest with you, there's so much leeway to pray for free that it doesn't monetize as much as I think it can. 
Do you have a model that's working today on in-app purchase? Or any, any f form of uh, freemium model? Well, in our case, sponsorship, then freemium. Got Sponsors, it. Yeah. If you can make your money uh, up front, that's the best way to go. And make the client happy. And make the client happy. Um, do we have any other questions on the floor? Yeah, what's the, what's the current status of uh, user-generated content when it comes to video in this part of the world? And where do you see that going in the future? It's quite big in other parts of the world. How is it in the, in the Middle East here? Can you guys hear that? User-generated user content, so videos done by individuals using, you know, handheld cameras and smartphones and downloading them. Is there a big one? Does that exist? Is there a lot of it there? So are you talking about is there a business model from making money from user-generated content? One, does it exist to begin with? And if it doesn't, is it going in a direction where you're seeing more, especially because of the Arab Spring and people are a lot more comfortable, you know, putting their videos out there. Is that happening here? Is there a specific person you'd like to ask that question to? To the media developers, like to maybe this? media producers, or uh, okay. If I, I hope I'm, I understood your question, but of course, there's lots of user-generated content that's uh, online, and I think most of the Arab Spring was uh, partially fueled by people using their phones. But in the context of monetizing it and and making money off it, no, that's not where the money is being going to be made. The money, uh, the money is being made by people who are creating. It's not user generated, it's actually professionally created content, but for web and, uh, and, and then as a result also getting views on YouTube. And that's the area where advertisers are beginning to notice and, and actually these people are becoming sort of stars on their own and they're beginning to get recognized on streets. But the user generated stuff, there's tons of it on there, but it's too sporadic and too disorganized and brands, brands in general, this is a problem YouTube has all over the world, not only in the Middle East. Brands don't trust user generated content when it's random because they have no idea what's going to appear next to their brand so they very they shy away from it Does anyone else want to ask? but I, what i see changing is that increasingly a lot of the traffic that used to go to you know the, the a lot of the traffic that used to go to the user generated stuff a lot of it will also start going to this professionally created new media kind of stuff so it's the videos that are being made that are um, I don't know if you know, like look up U-Turn U -turn TV, for example, in Saudi. There's a whole bunch of other examples like that. Uh, Kharabish, I think, is a Jordanian example. So there's tons of people who are, that's what's changing. Not the monetization of user-generated content in and of itself. 